This director has tackled time loops and body swapping, so now let's see what he can do with ghosts. Welcome to Box of Chocolates, where you never know what you're gonna get. Thank you for joining me here as we talk about We Have a Ghost, which is on Netflix now. I wanted to see this purely because of the director, Christopher Landon. He made Happy Death Day and Freaky, which I think are fun movies. Haven't seen Happy Death Day 2 yet. So I wanted to see his take on a ghost story, something a little bit different, something a little bit more family friendly, this boy bonding with this ghost, and the fact that David Harbour is playing the ghost excited me as well. And you know, this movie is... Fine. It exists. <laughs> That's about what I can say for it. It's there. It's on Netflix. You can watch it. But it's really wasted potential. But of course, this is all just my opinion, so leave your thoughts down in the comments below. Whether you agree or disagree, we can talk about it. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos from me. But I do want to start by talking about the things I enjoyed about this movie, and I think the performances all around are good. You have Anthony Mackie, who I really like, as the main character's father, and I like the relationship between our main young character and Anthony Mackie's character. There's a lot of tension between them. They don't go into as much detail about it as I would have liked, but there's enough there to where this relationship is pretty well handled throughout the movie, how their father is trying to look out for them, trying to do the right thing, trying to make money in any ways that he can, be successful however he can, for their sakes, but he just doesn't seem to be very good at it, so he actually keeps fucking up, which actually ends up hurting them, and they have to keep moving and starting over, and they're kind of broke. So he's got good intentions, but he is a flawed person, and his actions have been affecting his family in ways that he hasn't fully realized, and so his son is kind of fed up with that, and I like that. I like that they explored that side of the character. His son's frustrations are understandable. He was a likable enough kid. David Harbour is the ghost. He does not speak. We'll get back to that later, but for what he has, his facial expressions, his mannerisms, especially when he's doing things like trying to scare someone or out there in the more action-heavy scenes, he seems like he's having fun. He's doing a good job conveying things, conveying emotion with just his face without being able to speak with what he has, with how he's limited, he is doing a good job. Jennifer Coolidge is in there, she's fun. She's only in one scene, which sucks, but she's fun for the scene that she's in, the acting all around. Tig Notaro plays this government lady who's out to capture ghosts and everybody's good. And there is some charm to a story like this, this boy who's trying to help this ghost figure out what happened to him in his life because he doesn't remember so that he can pass on. Meanwhile, while you have the dad who wants to profit off of him and everybody on social media who's found out that a ghost exists and they're celebrating him and, and they love him and then you got people from the government trying to capture him. It's very classic E.T. style storytelling, a boy and his alien, a boy and his ghost. So there's always some charm in seeing a story like that. I was even reminded of Poltergeist a little bit. It's very different. It's not a horror movie by any means, but in that it was very family friendly for the most part, there is at least one scene in there where you get a little bit more intense with the ghost antics that could be a little bit more, like I said, intense for younger viewers. So I kind of thought it balanced that tone well. It's nice to get a concept like ghosts that are often associated with horror and get it in a silly, family-friendly movie that still takes itself seriously and does have some good character beats and might have a slightly darker moment here or there. There are some good things about this that make me wish it was better overall, but I think it really drops the ball in some areas. I think some of the ideas that they had here were just bad on paper, and they should have done it differently. One of the biggest things, if not the biggest, is the fact that, as I said, David Harbour's character cannot speak. Why would you do that? Everybody loves David Harbour. That's one of the biggest reasons I wanted to watch this, to see what kind of fun he would have with this character. And yeah, he has fun, and he does some good things, even with the limited capabilities of not being able to speak. Speaking is not the only way to characterize somebody, but it sure as fuck helps. The movie is mostly about the mystery trying to figure out what happened to this guy, and so he can pass on, and I don't feel that I know him well enough to really care all that much. I don't feel like he's well characterized enough because he never says anything. 
E.T. didn't speak, but he's an alien. He's got a lot of unique shit going on with him. He doesn't know what's going on. He's figuring out all this stuff for the first time. There's a lot there. He doesn't need to speak. Actually, he does speak. A little bit. He speaks more than this guy does. But he's not an alien. He's just a guy. Most of the characterization you can get to really invest you would come from him being a charismatic, likable, funny guy. And I just didn't care that much. If he had turned out to have died in his sleep, or he was killed by the mob, or maybe he was a serial killer, my reaction probably would have been, oh, okay, to any of those, because I didn't really care about him that much. And then when you do get the answer to the mystery, it's fine, it makes sense enough, but it's rather simple, and it didn't need two hours devoted to it, because that's how long this movie is, it didn't need to be that long. And I think there are entire characters and entire plot lines that you could remove from this to tighten it up. The ghost is getting famous on social media, and this ties in with the dad wanting to make money. But for the most part, all of these scenes of him getting famous and all these people doing, like, the earnest challenge on TikTok where they try to run into a wall like a ghost and people making all these hashtags for him. So much of that by the end feels like we just didn't need it. We could have focused in tightly on the mystery, the family trying to help him move on, because that's our main goal. All that other stuff feels like a distraction along the way, along with the government secret organization subplot where they're trying to capture him. That whole thing was bullshit. I know you want to have some external conflict in there, you want to have some people who are after Ernest the Ghost for nefarious purposes. If you have to do that, oh my god, you could have done it in a such a more interesting way. There's one character in particular who is just so poorly handled, their entire worldview is very well established as being one thing. It's practically the only thing we know about them. It's kind of their obsession. It's their whole deal. They, at one point in this movie, shift complete 180 in about five seconds to the point where I thought there was going to be a big twist explained about this character that would discuss why they would do this. And no. Nothing like that ever came. In fact, we never saw that character again after that moment. They just completely changed everything they were about in a few seconds. And it was like, that doesn't make any sense. What was the point of all of this? We could have just not had this whole subplot. We also have not just the main family, we have the neighbor girl who feels like she's in it because there has to be a love interest. I didn't really care much for her character. I thought she was kind of annoying. She's very like an ultra liberal character. And that's fine. I have no problem with her politics, but she would just kind of be political sometimes in a movie that otherwise has nothing to do with any of that. It's a simple family-friendly story about this boy bonding with this ghost. And then all of a sudden this girl will be like, uh, I can use this bathroom? Fuck your antiquated gender norms. And I'm like, Okay, that was weird. Whether you agree or disagree doesn't even matter. It just feels so out of place. Like, you're just throwing that into this movie randomly and it doesn't fit. I just kind of found her annoying, not because of her politics, but because they were trying to make her the quirky one, but I didn't feel charm there. I just felt annoyance. She'll play her trombone in the library because I never really got the whole no noise in the library thing. So cut her out, cut out the government, whatever the hell they were doing. I know you want to have the external thread in there. You don't even really need it. Cut out the social media. Just make it about this family, the four of them, bonding, getting over their personal issues, and focus in on the murder mystery, what happened to Ernest. And there you go. We're dealing with a ghost. You can make up whatever rules, whatever capabilities you want. You can have him do all these crazy things. You can come up with all of these ideas for how they're going to investigate what happened to him. You don't have to rely on the easiest idea in the world. What if the government wanted to get him? That's just, we've been there so many times and it's done in such an uninteresting way, especially with that one character. Flipping on a dime for no reason. What if everybody watched the ghost on TikTok? Not that interesting of a concept. I'd rather just stay focused on our main family. So I actually found myself really bored by this movie. 
in fairness, quality-wise, it's not terrible or anything. It's it's fine. It's totally passable. You can throw it on, watch it. You're not going to be offended or anything, but it's not going to stick with me at all. It's more, in terms of quality, like a 3. But on my personal scale, I have to be honest and give it a 2 because... I didn't really get anything much of value out of my watch here. I enjoyed some of the character moments, but it didn't do anything for me. I think so much of it was a big missed opportunity. I'm gonna forget about it real quick, and whatever Christopher Landon does next, I hope is more in the vein of his other movies. Maybe he should stick to more slasher type stuff. Maybe the family friendly thing just isn't for him. They should have really focused in on what worked the best and made it a mystery about this family and a ghost who can talk and really tie in the answers to the mystery with the family and their struggles. Whereas how it is, it just kind of feels like the family struggles are fine, not really fully gone into as much as I would have liked. And then there's also an answer to the murder mystery and that's just a unrelated, fine answer. It's fine, but it did very, very little for me, so can't go out of my way to recommend it. But that's all I have to say about that, so leave your thoughts down in the comments. Did you actually really enjoy this movie? Did you think David Harbour's character should have spoke? Did you think that there were things they could have cut out? How did the humor work for you? Because it really wasn't funny either, so it wasn't carried by humor. Leave your thoughts, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more from me. We're in the middle of a Rocky review series leading up to Creed 3. Also just recently reviewed Cocaine Bear. Twitter and Letterboxd linked in the description if you want to check those out. Share the video around. Thank you so much for supporting the channel, and I hope to see you for the next one.